Welcome to Sense and Nonsense A to Z, where we pick topics based off of the letter of the day. Today is episode five of season two, featuring the letter E. We're family and we're your hosts, A, T, and Z. So let's get started. So we have a special theme going on this week. We do. Keeping with the theme. Hello. Hello, Gavna. <laughs> We're going to do the best we can to make this as much English, England, Brit as we can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to start off with England's new prime minister. Yeah. Liz Truss, who was the leader of the Conservative Party. What they stand for, I'm not really sure yet. <laughs> However, <laughs> she took over as Britain's prime minister and was appointed by Queen Elizabeth II. Yeah. two days before she passed so timing timing is everything oh my god and it goes to show that she just worked up until the end yes so truss is the 15th prime minister within queen elizabeth's reign excellent yeah i love that yeah so i've been to england lots of times mm -hmm. and i've never really done the touristy stuff because i'm always funny i was going to ask you about that yeah, I'm there to visit family usually. So yeah. I'm in Oxfordshire. I'm not hanging out doing all the whatever. Yeah, but you I go have from the airport to the house. Kind of, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I have been to London. And I I do have a picture of myself in front of Buckingham Palace, in front cool. of the gates. And, uh -huh. you know, have walked around there, seen Big Ben, the Thames, Westminster Abbey, that kind of thing. Right. And I got to tell you. I really love that city. However, oh, I'm sure the way it's positioned, it traps all the exhaust. So Ew. it does smell of exhaust. And it is something that you have to get used to in that city. You know, like New York has a smell that you have to get sure. used to when you go to New oh, York. Yeah. <laughs> New so York does, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, so does London to <laughs> have one. But when, you know, depending on what parts of the city you're in, because right. there is a lot of traffic, but the way it's built, you know, it's an old town sure. and it wasn't built for vehicles. Uh, absolutely so, not. Yeah. yeah. So that is something you got to get used to. The other thing you got to get used to is all over the pavement on the ground. They tell mm -hmm. you that you have to look right because when you're coming from a country such as ours, right. we always look left for traffic. But when you oh, step off the curb, it's yeah. coming to the right. So it has to tell you, they tell you on the Go ground the to look right so that you and can left. Got see it. The, uh, the traffic yeah. coming. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be there I like a tennis like... match. Ding, 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 <laughs> you know? Like, look right, you know, you have to, because we're not used to it. And so much of yeah. the world isn't used to yeah. it. So True. that was one of the most striking differences about that city is like, they're telling you on the pavement, right. look out. It's pretty much the same thing in Bermuda too. Is it? Yeah. Well, yeah, cause you drive sense. on the wrong side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. drive on the wrong side. Did you yeah, catch the that? Wrong <laughs> side. The wrong side. <laughs> yeah. So on that note, let's do our 10 questions. Okay. English questions. Okay. I'm, I'm doing my best here. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. We'll make it work. Yeah. First question. What do you like on your English muffin? Butter. Me too. That's what, that's it. That's it. Yeah. No jam. No, no. anything else. No. Yep. I'm with you on that. Okay. Next question. Um, have you ever tried an English cucumber sandwich? No, but I do like English cucumbers very much. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I but, have cucumber have had cucumbers on my sandwich, but I've okay. never had like the tea sandwich with just yeah, cucumbers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And they trim the crust and all that yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had one of those either. I'm not a big cucumber fan anyway, but mm -hmm. okay. Next question. Do you watch English football? No, but I love the rugby. Do you? Yes. Okay. But it vexes my American mind because to advance forward, you have to throw the ball backwards. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first time I saw it, I was like, what? What is this madness? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. I know you've been to England a couple of times. Ever been to an English tea? 
I haven't, and I wish I had. I'd love to go to a like a cream tea or a high tea, something like that. Yeah, that would be cool, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Next question. Your favorite type of British vehicle? Mini Cooper. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. For me, it's a Jaguar. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to say it like them. Jaguar. Jaguar. <laughs> Yeah. Those are the only two acceptable ways to say it is yes. either Jaguar mm -hmm. or Jaguar. Mm -hmm. These people, that's a peeve of mine as a matter of Is fact. it? Oh my God. These people who say um, Jaguar is like, you know, oh, I hear that all the time. Jaguars. Really? Because of the football team. Jaguars. Really? Oh, Jaguars? No, no, no. no. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. They demolished that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Two ways to say it, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. Okay, next question. Ever give British sterling or English leather as a gift? I never have done. <laughs> that's, uh, what we used to give, that's what we used to give my dad when we were young. <laughs> we all used to get together and get him like British sterling or English leather. <laughs> that's funny. That's what we had, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if they even make, do they make English leather? I think so. Do they? Okay. Because I know they make British sterling. Okay. I'm sure you're going to say yes to this. Have you flown British Airways? I have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I never have. And Virgin Atlantic. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Virgin is very good. I hear that. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Next question is an easy one. All right. Best band from England. Queen. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry I'd they are the queen. yeah no, i know are. i know i agree i agree best band best love them love the beatles too but love the beatles all, too it's all about queen with queen. you and me. yep yep okay favorite english dog breed and there's a ton of there's them. a ton oh yep. my goodness i think people don't realize it's like okay that breeds from England? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That one is too. You know, I don't know. Maybe um, maybe the Terriers? Maybe like the oh, okay. Yorkies? English. Yeah. Uh, adorable. adorable. But the English, I mean, you know, they got a know, lot the of queen, good ones. The she queen likes really liked her corgis. Exactly. I know. I, I would say probably I'm not a, not a corgi person. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the Yorkies. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, you good. know, I'm into collies right now. You yeah, know? yeah. So, uh, and the Shetland Sheepdog. Yes. And um, let's see, the Border Collie, and of course the Rough Collie. They all from England. Yeah, from, uh, I, I, I quite do like the Border Collies as well. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I do too. They're very smart. All right, now I know the answer to this one. Okay. Favorite English actor. You know, do you? I do. Um. Okay, my favorite English actor oh, I would probably have one. to be Henry Cavill. <laughs> that wasn't the one I was thinking at you. Who were you thinking? Say. Alan Rickman. Oh, he's a favorite. I know he is. He is a, he's, but he's not here anymore. I know. What I was thinking a live person. Oh, okay. All right. So, although there is Sir Patrick Stewart and he's awesome. That's my favorite. Ding, ding, uh, ding. You got yeah. one. There are a lot of them, actually. I quite like a lot of women, too. Mm -hmm. The dames. I like the dames. Maggie Smith, Judy Dench. Sure. You know, sure. Absolutely. Because they're phenomenal. Yeah. Emma Thompson. Right. So, there's so many. Yeah. I, I hear yeah. you. All right. So that was 10, but here's my bonus. Okay. Um, I know you've been to England. Is there any place that you didn't get to that you want to take a look at? That you yeah, lots. Visit? Yeah, yeah, I would love to go to Stonehenge. I'd love to go to, yeah. uh, you know, Harry Potter World. <laughs> sure. I'd love to do that. Sure. There's lots of places. I would love to see the whole country. I'd love to see Scotland, too, and, and Ireland. But, you know, all these little villages. I love the little villages. Mm -hmm. You know, you can walk them, and they have so much character, and they have so much history. We don't really have stuff like that here. New England is the closest we really have to stuff like that, but it's right. not quite the same. Right. Um, I like the village feel. Mm -hmm. I like that. Being okay. able to just walk down the shops, not yeah. have to get in your oh. car and go everywhere. I, I, it's really nice. I know. That would be awesome. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah.
I've prepared a special England edition of Sense or Nonsense. Oh my goodness. Okay. Leads us right into this. I feel the pressure. Oh, <laughs> you got this. Okay, Sense or Nonsense. England is home to one of the oldest man-made structures on the planet. Sure, we'll say Sense. It's Stonehenge. Yay! Located awesome. near Salisbury in the county of Somerset, South England. Stonehenge is a series of standing stones set in earthworks and surrounded by hundreds of burial mounds. The prehistoric landmark is more than 3,000 years old, and many have considered that it should be one of the seven wonders of the world. I agree. Yeah. It's been voted recently, as a matter of fact, and it's been missed. Okay. Very good on that. Got one. I got one. All right. At least right. I won't have a big fat goose egg. <laughs> okay. Sense or nonsense? With the emergence of coffee culture in the UK, coffee is now more popular than tea in England. Oh. Hmm. I hope it's nonsense. It is. Oh, good. Even though tea sales have declined almost two thirds since the 70s, tea is still more popular than coffee. It's estimated that 165 million cups of tea are consumed in England every day, more than any other nation. Mm -hmm. And to compare to the U.S., mm -hmm. we're 20 times lower yeah. <laughs> than the U.K. in tea consumption. Cup of tea. I mean, you're talking about being in a village, you know, you see someone, hey, let's get together. Let's have a cup of tea. That's yeah. what they do. That's yeah. their coffee. Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. Okay, so for my last one. Okay. Sense or nonsense? England is home to the first postage stamp. Interesting. The first postage stamp. Sure, I'll say yes. Sense. You got it a thousand. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> the postage stamp was invented in Birmingham, England in 1839. The design featured Queen Victoria. Yeah. Very yeah. good, Z. Mm, thank you very much. All three right. For three. There you go. So that's Woo! our special edition. All right. I love it. Are you ready to do our E word game? Yeah, so uh, D word had 40 points. So it was 40 was out of really 45. Good. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was our highest so far. Mm -hmm. All right. I always get nervous with this. I know. You never know what these guys put in our envelopes. You I know. know. <laughs> it's a surprise every time. <laughs> okay. You want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. All right. First one is. I almost said the word. Oh gosh. <laughs> that wouldn't have been good. No. Okay. Jewelry. Earrings. Very good. All right. Yes. yes. Nice. All right. That's a that's a fiver. That's a fiver. Oh my God. I have a feeling we're gonna have some tough ones. Electric. Elite. Snake. I have no idea. Electric snake. <laughs> You're going to have to give me a rhyme on this one, I think. Okay. All right. Peel. Eel. Yes. Electric snake. Wow. Okay, that was a three. And thanks for the rhyme, by the way. You're welcome. Um, eel. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, people eat those. I know. Yikes, huh? I know. All right, my turn. Um, okay. Rubber. Elastic. There you go. All right. Yeah. Good clue. All right. Oh. Um, escalator. Um, elevator. All right. Oh, good. We got one. <laughs> Redeem myself from that other one. Oh, my God. Okay. My turn. Hmm. Sun. Sun. 
energy. <laughs> okay, that was good though. Okay. Blocked. Sun blocked. Evening. That was good too. <laughs> Moon. This is a harder one. Every day. Event. Eclipse. There you go. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. They're getting tougher. They're getting tough. They're not playing around. No, they're not playing around on us. Okay. All right. Let's try this one. Okay. Houdini. Escape. Yes. All right. All right. That's a good clue. Say <laughs> that worked out really good. Mm. Okay. All right. Next one. Okay. Pencil. Eraser. Very good. All right. All right. See, not too easy, but not too hard. I got another one here. Okay. Fuel. Emissions. Electricity. Energy. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. So we have one more on my part, huh? All right. All right. Hmm. 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 Pastry. Eclair. Very good. Ah, nice. Oh, my God. I thought for sure I was going to have to give you another one. That's good. <laughs> good job. Thank you. <laughs> good clue. That was a yeah, good clue. Good. good, 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 good. All right. Well, what's the tally? Okay. Just added it up. For the people who are playing at home with us, um, we just missed it. We're at 39. Oh, that was good, though. We had some really hard we ones. We had some tough time. ones. We really did. Oh, you my know? goodness. So, uh, all right. All right. I got one left here. Oh, and it's gonna okay. It's going to be the what do you think of word. Okay. And it is I, like in eyeball, not in eye, matey. <laughs> eyeball. <laughs> I. I. Then I'm going to go with I, I, you can't say I, I, I it's can't, I, okay. All right. Um, so you just said eyeball, eyeball, uh, human eye, stink eye. Oh, <laughs> pink eye, lazy eye, eyeglass, London eye. Keeping with our theme. Yes. Um, eyewear. Eye mask. Eye doctor. Mm, dry eye. With your eye mask, I should have said eye patch. <laughs> and you say that now. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Eye drops. Okay. How uh, about eyewitness? Ooh. Shut eye. Ooh. Um, bullseye. Oh, oh, you like that? Yeah. Glass eye. <laughs> <laughs> um, eye cream. Oh. Eyelid. Oh, good one. Eyelash. Eye shadow. Eyeliner. Mascara. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> we got a bunch of eyes in there. Yeah. That wasn't too bad. That was good, actually. That was, that was good. really yeah. good. Yeah. All right. So we hope you like that segment. And remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and leave us a comment. Keeping it PG-16. Please. And let us know what you think of when you think of I. We said a lot of them, though, so yeah, we had it might a be a struggle to come up with one. Yeah. All right. Good job. Let's do Pineapple Corner. Oh, yeah. All, All right. right. Yep. 
episode one of season four, Extradition, British Columbia. Keeping in the theme. Mm -hmm. We are introduced for the first time to Pierre Desparieux, a.k.a. Pierre (laughs) Despero. So in the cold open flashback, Henry tells Sean that there is no such thing as a perfect crime. He was supposed to turn in an art project. He was. That he claims may have been stolen because, um, you know, he did one. He did it. <laughs> yeah. And it was the perfect crime because yeah. the thief broke in and only stole Sean's painting. Exactly. And his father just said, there is no such thing as a perfect crime. He didn't go for it. Not at all. So Not at all. In the present time, Gus and Sean go on a ski vacation to Canada that Sean had originally booked for him and Abigail. Gus does not know this is happening. He was not happy when he found out either. No, (laughs) no, no. But on the slopes, Sean sees someone who looks familiar to him and he works out that he's seen him on Lassie's wall of suspects and he calls him to ask him about it. Right. And it turns out that this guy is an international art thief that Lassie's been after for the last six years. And he tells them not to go after Despero, that he's got no jurisdiction in Canada. Well, he's got right. no jurisdiction anywhere, but especially True. not in Canada. True. And he also said to stay out of my apartment. True. And then Sean said, we're out of peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's my favorite line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would be because you love peanut butter. Yeah. So I love that their ski jackets are stripes for Sean and checks for Gus, like it would be yeah. if they were their shirts. I love it's that. Hysterical. <laughs> I know. I know. My favorite part is when they're skiing. Uh huh. And they're explaining that you know, t- during their lesson to pizza. pizza slice to slow down and French fries <laughs> to speed up. <laughs> They're so hysterical. They're okay until he does the one move that they can't do, which is the slow turn. <laughs> slow, gentle turn. Slow, gentle I know. Turn. My favorite part. <laughs> so Sean and Gus go to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to garner some police support. And they right. do their thing with the aid of Robert McIntosh, nicknamed Big Apple by Sean. Big Apple. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Chief Ed Dykstra. And he has to convince them that he is psychic and he has to do the whole song and dance thing up right. there. Right. And Gus is like, are you sure you want to do this to a foreign country? And Sean's like, not really. <laughs> it's like, we had to go through immigration. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, Lassie and Jules do arrive to assist the quote unquote head detective Spencer. Right. And right. Lassie's all verklempt because first of all, he doesn't have a gun because they wouldn't let him in a country with it. True. That was <laughs> and, funny. And then he's super pissed because he's got to ask Sean's permission to get into the crime scene. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and Sean gives Jules the thumbs up yeah. to come in to the crime seat, but you know, last yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. so. That's Reluctantly funny. lets him in. Yeah. Sean is the boss. That's right. <laughs> so the Mershon Truce blonde cigarette burning is Despero's signature. Exactly. And amidst all of his tomfoolery, Sean sees his leg being lifted out onto the roof and he's like, ah, follow me to the roof. And of course they don't. They don't. Yeah. So we meet Pierre Despero up there and he says, it's mildly impressive that you found me here. And of course it's Carrie Elwes. And he's doing that in that very upper crusty gentlemanly English accent. Absolutely. And he is my favorite reoccurring character in the whole series. Mine too. Hands down. Hands down. Yep. Love that character. Yes. I mean, he finds a way to insult them and befriend them at the same time. And exactly. It's it's so classy. Yep. He's dangerous, but not really. Yeah. 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 And then he jumps off the roof of a 26 story building, leaving behind no evidence and making Sean and Gus look extremely foolish to the RCMP and to Lassie and Jules. Right. So they catch up with Despero and he finds them at a bistro and, and Sean thinks it's like, oh, look, we found him again. And he's like, no, I found you. Don't be rude. Sit down. <laughs> and then he kind of tells them that he's bored with this life that should be exciting. He's an international art thief. He can't be caught. And he's right. kind of bored by what should be an exciting life. Right. And in order to spice things up. He writes everything he's going to do in the next couple of days down on the back of a business card and he gives it to Sean and he says, sometime tomorrow I'm going to steal a Manet and he writes Manet. Right. Then I'm going to make you look foolish again and he writes foolish. Right. 
Yeah. Then I'm going to treat myself like a king. And he writes, writes king and then king. he signs it. Right. And Sean's like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some <laughs> of that candy. And he's writing on a cloth napkin. And then the maitre d' comes and he's like, are you writing on our cloth napkins? And he's like, what's that? <laughs> Who my does fault? that? <laughs> like, you're an animal. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite parts is when he's trying to convince Lassie and Jules to help him because he knows this guy's going to steal this Manet. And right. she's like, how certain are you that this is going to happen? And he goes, it's like he wrote it down on a piece of paper and handed it to me. And that's exactly what he did. But anyway, it's that's so right. funny because they go and they're staking this joint out. Mm -hmm. They're too late. He's stolen the painting already. And in its place, he's left to this clown, <laughs> sad clown painting. That's not a Monet. No. <laughs> and then Sean and Gus are taking a romantic carriage ride. And Sean says to him, he told us exactly what he was going to do and when he was going to do it. And we still couldn't catch him. How good is this uh, guy? Yeah. And this is where Gus finally gets wise to the fact that figures it out. Was meant <laughs> it's like, for Sean wait a second, this is a little too romantic, you know? Yeah, yeah when they were going to go to the kissing bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he totally kicks Sean out of the carriage while it's still rolling. Because it's paid with Gus's credit card. I <laughs> know. Oh, Sean's right. starting to figure out. He's like, I think he's using me because he's telling me a different story now. Right. So when they go for the third thing, which is to treat myself like a king, Sean figures he's going to steal this crown. And they enlist Macintosh to help them bypass the alarm at the gallery. Because it happened that he helped install it. And I liked they, him, by the way. I, I did Macintosh. too. I, yeah. He reminded me a lot of Hornstock. Yes, exactly. Same yeah. type of guy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this does not go well at all. Sean and Gus no. wind up getting arrested. Macintosh winds up getting fired because the crown goes missing. And Sean's like, how could that be? We were there the whole time. The only way he could have done it is if he had it to begin with. Yes. And he's like, oh, my God, the gallery owner gave it to him. And then he starts to unravel this insurance fraud, fraud kind of thing. scheme. Exactly. Yeah. That it ended up that he made it look like a perfect crime. And so, when Sean yeah. catches up with him at the plane, he says, Mr. Spencer, you have an impressive learning curve. And yes. I always love that. And Sean that, goes, it was good. Thank you. I also played the mandocello. Yes. Not well, <laughs> but who else do you know who plays the mandocello? No one. <laughs> and then you're like, so let down by the fact that this is kind of an insurance scheme and he's yeah. not this great art thief. And then when yeah. they're hauling him away, he says to Sean, I've always fantasized about breaking out of prison. I, and yeah. so you're kind of like, ooh, you're tantalized again by this character. Oh, sure. And at that time, you didn't know that it was going to be a recurring character. That's right. But uh, yeah, when he shows up again, it's another good episode. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. And did you spot the pineapple? This was a toughie. This was a tough one because it was like in the background. You know what would have been good if when they stole a Manet, they could have had a painting instead of a clown. That could have been a pineapple there. That would have been good. Yes, I agree. But, but it was the balloons. Yeah, it was. You had to be looking. You had to really, really be looking. And it was off to the right. And mm -hmm. um, if it wasn't for the spikes... Yes. I'm not sure that I would have guessed that that was the pineapple. Me either. And I was looking at it and they kept it in frame for a very long they did. time. Yep. Yeah. And I think I might not have noticed it if they hadn't left it lingering so long, along with I the agree. spikes. Yeah. Exactly. I'm with you 100%. Yeah. yeah. But it was a great episode. I, I love it. I love, I love this it. introduction to Pierre Despereau. Yeah, and like too. you said, he is my favorite recurring character as well. Mm -hmm. Every time he shows up, you know, it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say just a couple of things about England and British culture that I love. Okay. And one of the things is every morning I drink my coffee and sometimes I have tea out of it. I got these Wittard Chelsea mugs. They're, they're coffee mugs mm -hmm. in a tea shop in England. Mm -hmm. And cute. it's really funny. It's so yeah. cute. I love it so yeah. much. Yeah. I like the inside of that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're made in Thailand. That's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> Even the English stuff is made in Thailand, folks. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I am quite a fan of uh, English breakfast tea. 
That's my go-to tea. Right. And I do love crumpets as well. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, even though I'll only have butter on my English muffin, I right. will eat butter and jam on a crumpet. Well, it's different, oh, different texture, you know? Yeah. 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 I love Cornish ice cream. So good. I have this like honeycomb ice cream. It's never had really it. So I don't know. Delicious. Delish. And I also love chips, which are thick fries, thick French fries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Fish with and lots, chips. lots of malt vinegar and salt on them. Yeah. Really delicious. And I also like going to pubs in England because they stock a lot of ciders. And I like cider, so it's easy for me to find something to drink. I can do that too. I, They're very I can good. Be, I can be a cider person. The ciders sure. are very good. I'm sure. They're very good. Yeah. And uh, just one more little thing I'd like to say is okay. that I do like the idea of a constitutional monarchy. And do you? yeah, I like I like having a parliament with mm -hmm. elected officials to okay. to do battle that way right. and for laws and stuff like that but i like the thought of them working in tandem with a monarch who holds a long view and that there's an opinion that isn't based on accommodating a heavy donor or a drive to get reelected or a party affiliation i like that that there is something outside of politics that has a voice and I think it's a very valuable asset to possess. And I wish we had something along those lines here that people could kind of rally behind outside of a political affiliation, some kind of leader that would, I, I think that that's valuable. I'm still all about voting. I think we should still have a vote. Don't get me yeah. wrong. And that's why yeah. I like a constitutional monarchy because they reign, they don't rule. And so there's a difference there. There is, they're not making decisions for the country, mm, but they're yeah. there as a guide, a guidance to say, Hey, do we really want to go in this direction? Do we want to go in that yeah. direction? That yeah, kind of thing. But I think yeah. that more often than not, um, when there is no other balance to it, mm -hmm. that the elected officials have a party agenda mm. and, and that overrules sometimes what the people are actually voting for so what you're saying is you're okay with the voting of democracy in the politics however you feel that there should be like a voice like i don't want a ruler right but i want right. a, a another a voice a, you want another, another voice yeah, yeah outside of the political arena yeah i get you it. know like an independent voice i get it yeah i get yeah that. all right yeah so that's my little, that's my two cents on that. Okay. <laughs> so even though we're pretty much concentrating on England and mm -hmm. that stuff, I am still going to do It's Greek to Me oh, because good. we do have a connection we here. We do, yeah. Yes, Prince Philip. Mm -hmm. Duke of Edinburgh was the husband of Queen Elizabeth II and served as consort of the British monarch from February 6, 1952 until his death in 2021. Mm -hmm. He was born on June 10, 1921 in Corfu, Greece. Yes, he was. His father was Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark, which made him the Prince of Greece and Denmark. Mm-hmm. In the summer of 1946, he was granted permission to marry Elizabeth. Then before the official announcement of their engagement in July 1947, Philip relinquished his Greek and Danish royal title and became a naturalized British subject. He married Elizabeth on November 20th, 1947. Then the day prior to their wedding, the King of England granted Philip the title of His Royal Highness. Then on the wedding day, he was additionally honored by becoming the Duke of Edinburgh. He had a couple other titles too, but that was the most important. Mm -hmm. So Philip was the longest lived male member of the British royal family. He retired from his royal duties on August 2nd, 2017 at the age of 96. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know he died last year, April 9th, 2021, and he was 99. He was. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about longevity, huh? Right. Yeah. Of 
Queen Elizabeth II's funeral was yesterday, Monday, September 19th, and coverage started here in the States before 5.30 a.m. And I joined, (laughs) yeah, I mean, I know, I joined about 6.30, and uh, the procession and the services were all very grand. It was extraordinary. Yes, yes, it was. There was about 2,000 people uh, that included dignitaries that attended the service in Westminster Abbey. And then about 800 people that were more personal Mm -hmm. attended the service at St. George's in Windsor. But over a million people came out to pay their respects along the procession route. It was packed. Absolutely. It was packed. How about the days before? I mean, people were waiting in line for for over 15, a day they were waiting yeah, i mean some of them were lucky enough to just be waiting for 12 to 15 hours exactly like david beckham yeah did How you awesome. see him he got, yeah yeah he was there for 12 hours yeah yeah and he took it in stride I mean, of course he did he was, and know? he was taking yeah. pictures with people and yeah. you know they everybody yeah. was That's really cool. respectful and everything because i mean you were there not for a celebrity sighting you exactly. were there to honor the queen exactly. but so is he and i yes. thought that it was very uh telling of him that he yeah. stood in line like everybody else to pay his respects absolutely, absolutely. that's yeah. that was wonderful i mean the the cel- it was a celebration but it was also both sad yeah you know yeah um oh, but the were... precision the detail it was oh. and the protocols are unbelievable uh, unbelievable i mean the military precision was T- in meticulous oh my and goodness meticulous I, it, it was unbelievable a couple of things about that struck me one was the royal navy officers were yes. pulling her coffin yeah they were yeah. serving as horses and pulling her coffin and then the other thing was listening, just hearing the boots hit the ground because yeah. everybody was walking yeah. in step with one another, no matter yeah. who you were walking. It was incredible. Like I remember watching Phillips and Phillips was quite grand because he had mm-hmm. that military aspect to yes. his, but yeah. there were people walking all different and their own pace, whatever, walking, walking, but hers was just like locks. Precision. Don't, don't, yes. don't, don't. And yep. I was like listening, like even over the music that was being played, the sound of those boots, mm-hmm. I thought that was like intimidating almost the, the, the yeah. grandeur that was being yeah. given to her and rightfully so absolutely but it was, it was yeah. incredible i thought yeah so it was all very lovely and it was very moving the whole thing but what really started to hit me was when she was waiting her coffin was waiting at the base oh. of the steps of saint george's yeah. and i was like I was getting all choked up because I was like, this Mm -hmm. is it. This is the last, this is the last time we're going to see her. And it was a really impactful moment with me. Like when, when I watched Phillips, I was really mourning for her. I really felt the loss for her. Her. And, you know, watching Diana's 25 years ago, being in shock and disbelief and crying and the whole thing. But for then I was in mourning for the boys. Absolutely. You know, and today I mourned not only for her family, but for the world because she was really extraordinary. It was was. an international thing. Yep. And I also mourned for myself, <laughs> you know, I really did because I, I well, you have an it. English connection. Too, I so. do, but I really yeah. feel it like her position. I really feel. And when the pipe, when her personal Piper yes. played her lament, yes, played her out for the last time, I was yep. just like, or just you lost it oh that (laughs) was it you know I thought I was doing really well I was watching for like five hours and I'm like okay you know I'm feeling it but I'm okay but when he started to play and he played her out even just thinking about it now I was overcome you know sure and I just want to say I thank her for her service to the world and for doing such an amazing job in an unbelievably demanding position that she did not ask for no but no, for which she was most highly suited. And I will yep. miss her very much. God rest the queen.
We hope you enjoyed our special England episode in honor of Queen Elizabeth II. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to tell your friends and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Sense and Nonsense A to Z, all one word. And if, if you're listening on YouTube, remember to like our episode, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the notification bell Ding! to get notified of each episode as it becomes available. We appreciate you listening. With that, we're out of here. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.